Good morning, folks. As you watch plasma filaments dance over the northwestern limb of our star, know that we're going to hit two big earthquakes, two deadly flood events, and a flurry of top science news. But we're starting at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star relatively calm. The sunspots are still in decay, no solar flares or CMEs, and even the solar wind is calming its telemetry here at Earth along with geomagnetism. We do have more coronal holes facing Earth. Their wind is expected in two to three days, but we magnetically connected to the north yesterday and two more big quakes occurred. These came in at 6.5 and 6.8 respectively before the downgrade. Going next to the deadly flooding, this is in France where that system stalled overhead after coming in off the Atlantic over Spanish and Portuguese coasts in the days before. Moving next to Yemen where that cyclone did come on shore there, this is the scene where they say provincial capitals are almost totally inundated. Many communities and locals feel they are completely cut off. Let's go to the science news, and we're starting with a solar model that is an RLC electric circuit. Very interesting to think about how that might produce solar flares as opposed to the traditional radiative and convective zone models. Up next, we're going to go way, way deep into the cosmos to the point where we're looking way, way back in time. They claim to have discovered not only one of the earliest proto-superclusters, but one of the biggest. They say this one would rival anything in existence today. Pretty good read, it is linked for you below. And while we are deep in the cosmos here and deep back in time, interesting article saying that the quark gluon plasma they believe to exist at the early start of the universe was probably a liquid. That is also an interesting read. But of course, today's top story comes out of the Arctic and AGU. They are saying that since the ice is melting, it is expanding the phytoplankton blooms, which means that it's not shifting, it is increasing. They are saying that productivity of the phytoplankton, both in terms of food production for the ocean and in terms of carbon dioxide scrubbing, is on the rise. Interestingly, despite saying this and describing some uncertainty about some of the future effects of this phytoplankton bloom, they do say the consequences will be dire. Hmm, only for global warming scientists. Anyway, we've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 425 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.